mother culture. Stupid, huh? Ishmael frowned. Why do you say that? Well, I mean, it's a daydream. It's menagerie. Fluff. Twaddle. He shook his head. No story is devoid of meaning, if you know how to look for it. This is true of nursery rhymes and daydreams, as it is of novels and epic poems. Okay. Your daydream isn't fluff or twaddle, Julie. I can assure you of that. And what's more, it's done what I wanted it to. I asked for a story that would explain what you're doing here, and you've given me that. I now understand what you're looking for. Or to put it more precisely, I now understand what you're prepared to learn. And without that, I couldn't proceed at all. I didn't really understand what he was getting at, but I told him I was glad to hear it. Even so, he went on, I'm not sure as yet how we go on with you. Whether you know it or not, you present me with a special problem. Why's that? I'm not like the teachers at your school, Julie, who merely teach you subjects that your elders have decided you should learn. Things like mathematics, geography, history, biology, and so on. As I explained earlier, I'm a teacher who acts as a midwife to his pupils, bringing out into the open air the ideas that are growing inside of them. Ishmael paused for a moment to think, then asked what I thought the difference was between me and Alan Lomax, educationally speaking. Well, I suppose he's finished high school and probably college. That's right. And so? So he knows some things. I don't know. That's true, he said. Nevertheless, the same ideas are growing inside both of you. How do you know that? His lips twitched into a smile. Because you've both been listening to the same mother from the day of your birth. I'm not referring to your biological mother, of course, but to your mother, your cultural mother. Mother culture speaks to you through the voice of your parents, who likewise have been listening to her voice from the day of their own birth. She speaks to you through the cartoon characters, and the storybook characters, and the comic book characters. She speaks to you through newscasters, and school teachers, and presidential candidates. You've listened to her on talk shows, you've heard her in popular songs, advertising jingles, lectures, political speeches, sermons, and jokes. You've read her thoughts in newspaper articles, textbooks, and comic strips. Okay, I said. I guess I see what you mean. This is, of course, not peculiar to your particular culture, Julie. Every culture has its own and nurturing and sustaining educational mother. The ideas being nurtured in you and Alan are very different from those being nurtured in tribal people who are still living the way their ancestors lived tens of thousands of years ago. The Huli of Papua New Guinea, for example, or the Makuna Indians of eastern Colombia. Yes, I see. The things to be brought forth from you and Alan are the same, but they're at different stages of development. Alan's been listening to Mother Culture for 20 years longer than you. So what is to be found in him is naturally more fixed than articulated. Yes, I can see that. Like the way a fetus is more filled out at 7 months than at 2 months. Exactly. Okay, so what? So... Now I'd like you to go away and let me think about how I'm going to proceed with you. Go away, where? Anywhere, wherever you like. Home, if you have one. This made it my turn to frown. If I have one? What makes you think I don't have one? I think nothing, Ishmael replied coolly. You brittled at me for calling you a child, and you tell me you're old enough to steal cars, have an abortion, or deal crack cocaine. Therefore, I thought it more, best to make no assumptions about your living arrangements. Wow, I said. Do you take everything so literally? Ishmael took a moment to scratch the side of his jaw. Yes, I suppose I do. You'll find that I have a certain kind of sense of humor, but statements of comical exaggeration tend to be lost on me. I told him I'd keep that in mind, indulging in some comical exaggeration. Then I asked him when I should come back. Come back whenever you please. Tomorrow? By all means. Sundays are not days off for me. The little twitch around his mouth told me it was meant to be a joke of some kind. 
Mom was in a comfortable haze by the time I got back. I guess she feels it's her motherly duty to take an interest in how I spent my time away from home, so she asked where I'd been. I told her the lie I'd prepared, that I'd been with Sharon Spaley, a friend. Didn't anyone, did anyone think I was going to tell her the truth? That I was having a cozy little chat with an ape? Give me a break.